Hello everyone. For our today's lesson, I will be discussing to you on how to identify different kinds of technical growing. So when we talk about technical growing, we're talking about the graphic and technical communication tools that is used by a person who works with technology, such as engineers, architects, designers, technologies, and technicians. Now a good example of technical drawing is flowchart. Actually, we have different schematic diagram aside from flowchart. And one of the schematic diagram is what we call B to the code. But take note, we're just going to deal with flowchart. Wherein when we talk about flowchart, flowchart is a diagram that uses graphic symbols to depict the nature and flow of the steps in a process. Flowchart also shows a solution to a problem. For a flow chart will always show the documentation process. So how will it go? What are the different steps that we need to perform? Okay, now this will be the situation whenever you are going to use a flow chart. We have algorithm and object, so somewhat similar to mathematics. Procedure, program, projects, and troubleshooting. Troubleshooting, let's say for example, you're about to turn on or you're turning on the computer, but then apparently you encounter the problem. And that is, there is no display in your monitor. So what is the thing that you're going to do? Through flowchart, you will be able to give a solution to this kind of problem. But what are the different elements of flowchart? So we have here the first one, what is what we call now, the termin terminator or terminal scene. So that is over when we talk about shape. Wherein a terminator or a terminal symbol indicates the starting point and the end point. Meaning, it should always be the first symbol that should be seen on your screen and the last symbol that should be seen at the bottom of the screen. That is terminal symbol. The next one is what we call the input and output symbol. Or simply that is what we call the parallelogram. So this symbol allows you to input or encode or display a certain process. So let's say, for example, you would like to display 5 and 7. But when we talk about flowchart, you're not going to type there 5 and 7. You need to use a variable where in letter A is for number 5. Letter B, that is for 7. So just like in mathematics, so variable, it's somewhat a container. So what's inside letter A is number 5. What's inside of letter B is number 7. So let's say, for example, you would like to input two numbers. So it should be question mark. Now, what question mark? Because question mark should be associated when we talk about flow chart. That means that question mark represents input and output. So question mark A and B. Hey, no, you're not going to type question mark 5 and 7. Instead, question mark A and B were in A is 5, then B is 7. Next, we have what we call now the processing symbol or the rectangular shape. So normally when we talk about process, it is used to perform an arithmetic operation. You should get that. The sum, the product, the quotient, and the difference. Example, sum is equals to A plus 5. So you're not going to type sum is equals to 5 plus 7. Okay? Then we have the decision box or the diamond. Decision box used to answer the question true or false, yes or no. If the condition is true or yes, what will happen? Where will it go? If the condition is false or no, what will happen and where will it go? Let's say, for example, you're going to identify which is higher, A or B, where in A is 5, then B is for 7. Which is higher? Is A greater than B? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, where will it go? If the answer is no, what will happen to your future? That is the function of a decision mark. Also, if you're going to insert the different elements of flowchart, you need to use the flow lines. For flow lines indicates the next thing that the computer will perform. Okay? Then we have the connector. 
Now, connector is somewhat similar to a flow line. The only difference is a connector can jump from one element to another element. So it could be from the processing symbol, it can go directly to the end point or to your terminator. Unlike the flow lines, it just shows the arrow what is the next thing that the flowchart will perform. Now, this will give an example. This is an example, a good example of flowchart. A flowchart is a top-down menu on B. It will only go to the right panel of your screen or at the right side if you're going to use the decision box, which is answerable by yes or no, or true or false. So never ever create a flowchart in a rectangular form or in a rectangular flow. Or if you're going to do that, you are already using a pseudocode and not a flowchart. Now let us take this one as a good example. Based on the problem, you need to create a flowchart that will perform the steps on how to clean the computer laboratory. Now, in solving the problem, just like in mathematics, you need to perform certain tasks first. In mathematics, the first thing that we need to do is to identify what is being tasked. In flowchart, we need to identify the tasks. So what is being asked in the given problem? We need to perform or display the steps on how to clean the computer laboratory. Now, what is given? That is still identifying the task. The given value in the problem that has been given is the computer laboratory. Because that is the one that you need to pay attention and you need to clean. The next thing that you need to do now is to organize and document the task. So after identifying what is given and what is asked, you need to plot the answer using the different flow charting elements this time. Then, after completing all the diagrams or all the elements, you are now at the end point of your flow chart, then you need to test whether that flow will run smoothly or correctly without any error or problems. So that is, or those are the steps on how are we going to create a flow. Now, I will be giving you another example. So, I have here a problem. The problem is you need to create a flowchart that will display the steps on how to turn off the computer. So, that is a problem. Let us go back to the procedure on how are we going to create a flowchart. One, identify the task. To identify the task, you need to know what is task in the problem. In what is asked in the problem, you need to display the steps on how to turn off the computer. Now, what is given? That is turning off the computer. Then, after that, you need to document now or use the different symbol. So, in that case, I will be starting my flowchart using the terminator or the terminal symbol. For in, I included there. I have to inform the problem that is to display the steps on how to turn off the computer. Then you need to use a flora. The next thing is you need to come up in your mind or think what are the different steps that I need to perform in turning off the computer. So you have to process it in your mind. That's why I use this the processing symbol or the rectangular shape. So I have to process it, process it in my mind, what are the steps? Then, after processing it in my mind, I knew already what are the steps that I need to perform. Then, I will be answering now the problem to display the steps on how to turn off the computer. So the first thing is, click the start button. So I use this the parallelogram for the input and output symbol and I encoded first the question mark that indicates that it will be displayed but since you're going to use since you're going to use or display the text so you're not going to display the process you're going to display the text the content the steps if that is the case since that is a screen variable you need to type 
a quote, a quotation mark. Since you're going to display the text or the string value, you're going to encode everything with a symbol. So I just encoded for that first listener. And I will go back. E. Identify. Next, click the start button. Using the code, the double code, the open and close code, the content or the line or the sentence, click the start button will be displayed. If you're not going to put a quotation mark, the flowchart will identify that as a variable. So meaning to say the words click the start button represent a value. Just like what I have given to you a while ago. In A, that is 5. In B, that is 7. So may naman yung A and B. But since you're going to display the string, so string, that means the characters, the words, the paragraphs or the line, you have to encode it with quotation mark. Okay? Again, if you need to display a certain text, display or print, you have to encode it with open code and close code. So click the start button. After that, click our code. Now since I do not have enough space already, so I still have two steps or three steps that I need to perform. That's the time that you're going to use already. A, yes, very good, a connector. So a connector is somewhat similar to a piece of paper we're in. Sometimes you are writing, right? Apparently, there is no enough space already. You're going to write the continuation. But no, continuation at the back of the sheet of the paper. So that is a connector. It serves as a connection or a continuation of the next page. Then, you see, letter A and A. If you're going to use a connector, you need to write or use a symbol, a letter. Not necessarily letter A. You can use letter J if you want. The first, the first letter of my name, letter J. But it should be letter J as well. This one, the second connector. Then, the next thing that I need to do now is to choose and click shut down or turn off. And after that, I need to display turn off the AVR or the UPS. This is our common mistakes. After turning off or shutting down the computer, we tend to forget to turn off the AVR and the UPS. Also, we tend to forget this one. Unplug the power cable to the socket. So, these are the different steps that I need to perform in turning off the computer. So, I have displayed already the steps on how to turn off the computer. I already answered the problem or what is being asked in the problem. You need to end now your flowchart. So you need to use a terminator. Where in, it indicates that I have turned off or shut down the computer properly. So that is a simple flowchart. The next one is, the next problem will be, you're going to create a flowchart that will show if there is an error you encountered in turning off the computer. An error encountered in turning off the computer. So this time, you will be using a decision box because you're going to ask the users. So yung babasa, ang flowchart mo, kailangan mo siyang tanungin kung meron ba siyang problem na na-encounter. So again, you will use the terminator or the terminal symbol to start the flowchart. So, if there will be an error encountered in turning off the computer. Then, I need to input the steps in turning off the computer. It is not necessarily because this has not been included in the problem, but I just included it. For me to get, to get be reminded or to be reminded of those steps that I need to perform. And after that, I need to perform all the steps in turning off the computer for me to know if there will be some errors that I will be encountering in the process of turning off or shutting down the computer. To perform the steps, so that is processing. Then, after performing the steps, 
I need to ask now my users or the users, the one who turned off the computer, I need to ask myself, did I encounter the problem in turning off the computer? Does the user encounter a problem during the process of turning off the computer? Yes or no? If that is yes, so let's say for example, you encounter the problem while turning off the computer. The answer is yes. So I need to process in my mind, identify what is the problem that I encountered. Ano ba yung na-encounter ko? For example, in the process of turning off the computer, the computer lags for hang. So I knew already what happened to my computer. The next thing that I need to do, to give a solution. Think of a way on how to solve the problem that I encountered. So I already have in my mind, I will press control, out, delete. So the three fingers or three keys that we can see in our keyboard. Wherein when we click the or when we press control, out, delete, the computer will restart. It will restart. It will turn on again the computer. If that is the case, the computer has been turned on again, then I need to shut down the computer. So I already process it in my mind. I knew already the problem and I already gave a solution. Then where will it go? So I will be using again another connector. See? So this one, it goes here. Since the computer turned on again, then I need to perform again the steps on turning off or shutting down the computer. See? That is one of the function of the connector. It can jump you to another flowcharting element. So, I already performed again the steps on how to turn off the computer. Then I will ask myself, would I encounter the problem during the process of turning off the computer? I already turned off the computer smoothly without any errors and problems. Then, since I do not have enough space, I will be using another connector. See, this is letter A and this is letter B. If you're going to use same letter, the computer will get confused. So if that is letter A, it will not it will not go here. Or it will not go here in the performing the steps. Automatic it will go here. So it should be different because the purpose of letter A is a continuation of the page. The purpose of letter B is to go back to the next procedure. Okay. Since I do not I do not encounter any problem, no is the answer. Then I will end my project. The computer has been turned off or shut down properly. So this is now what we call the sub-process using the decision box. So those are the different ways on how are you going to use the different flowcharting symbols and on how to solve the problem that has been given using the different flowcharting elements. So I hope you've learned a lot on how to create a flowchart and answer the problem that will be given to you. So thank you and God bless. Keep safe everyone and see you in our next video lesson. Bye!